Hi, my name is Jonathan Kuo, and welcome to Animal Drawing for CGMA. Um, today will be an introduction class, so we're going to just cover some basics. I'm going to show you some stuff to keep in mind of, and show you some past animal artists, and show you some stuff to avoid and to, keep, um, to focus on. So a little about myself, I am a concept artist at DICE currently working on the Battlefield franchise. Um, Pre-OC worked on um, South Park game at Obsidian Entertainment. Um, worked on some History Channel films um, on concept art for some animals and creatures. So um, that's pretty much a little bit by myself. And also want to show you a little bit of my work. Um, these are more personal work, so I can't really show any of my professional work since it's all of them still under NDA. So, just a little bit of my work here. Um, I mainly like to draw dinosaurs, and I use my um, knowledge for uh, an animal anatomy to draw animals from the past, and also creatures that's made up. Okay. So I just want to show you a little bit of what I do personally. Um, it's a Mosasaur um, painting. This is actually going to be in the museum. Um, it's a Mosasaur painting and it's going to be in the museum somewhere. And here's some little sketch of an alien creature. So just very has I'm kind of very ranged on certain stuff. I tend to like to do um, prehistoric animals, basically, on my pastime. Okay, so um, that's just a little bit of me. Um, if you want to check out more, um, you can check out my website um, at jonathanquoteart.com. But that's pretty much about myself. Um, so let's begin with the class. So I want to begin for the class um, to show you some old animal artists um, from the past to kind of give you guys an idea of what this class is going to be. Um, so let's begin with the most very, very beginning. Um, cave paintings. Cave painters. Now cave painters has a very strong knowledge of anatomy. Even though they don't understand basic forms and basic fundamental shapes, they still have a great deal of knowledge of anatomy. Um, you can see them from their image um, that they draw on the caves. Okay? You could tell where all the bone constructions are. You could tell where the knees are at. Okay? And because they know so much of these animals back then, allow them to draw them from imagination. They don't have photos back then. So all this all is drawn from memory and imagination. And it's because they're hunters and they this is their livelihood. So they they live this every day of their life. So you could really um, realize that they have a great sense and knowledge of anatomy. Okay, so here's some quick example of different type of wild horses. Okay, even, even though it's exaggerated, they still have a great knowledge of where the anatomy is, where the joints are at. Okay. Second artist I want to show you is called William Hunt Cooner. William Hunt Cooner is also a hunter, okay, like the cave man. Okay. He fell in love with African art, you know, African wildlife actually. So he started painting them and it knows how just such great in knowledge of anatomy here just straight out from imagination as well so all this is not actually copying from photo and this is a great example here image like this is not copied straight out of the photo okay it's all from his head okay and it's because he how well he understands anatomy allow them to draw this from right, right from his head Okay. 
third artist I want to show you is Carl Rungus. Now Carl Rungus is also a, a hunter that fell in love with wildlife and started painting them. Uh, he fell in love with North American wildlife and really got into doing these North American animal paintings. Okay? And this one is especially a great example of how a, an animal artist can depict a action painting straight out of its head without any uh, without copying from photo might I use photo for reference but not copying a photo at all okay okay next is Charles R. Knight Charles R. Knight is one of a famous paleo artist, paleo artist, prehistoric animal artist, um, he painted a lot of the famous dinosaurs you've seen in the Ray Harryhausen um, movies, the claymation movies. Um, he has such great range knowledge of anatomy. Although he's not, he wasn't a hunt, um, hunter or sportsman, he has a vast knowledge of anatomy. He loved going to the museum and study animals and fell in love with these guys when the museum people actually got him a job paint, doing these paintings for the museum. And because he has such great knowledge of anatomy, he could depict these dynamic um, poses on dinosaurs which back then were thought as slow sluggish animals. Now the reason I'm showing you all these guys is because they have great knowledge of anatomy. These guys has really strong knowledge of anatomy. Um, allow them to paint and draw animals straight out from their imagination. Now, this guy is Bob Coon. Bob Coon is one of the greatest, um, in my opinion, one of the greatest animal uh, artists out there. Okay. His drawing is very linear, but he has same thing, a great vast knowledge of anatomy, understanding form and understanding anatomy structure of the animal. Okay, he was also a hunter, and time to time he will also um, hang around with other hunters and do studies while they actually hunt down the animals. Okay, so here's a photo of example of that. And here's a photo that I want, an image I want to show you how important just drawing from imagination look at the dynamic pose of this picture okay, you have this amazing gazelle and lion right here just this drawing right here now if you would actually have to draw this copying from photo or copying from some some image then you're gonna have to be right here where you have to take the photo you might even get killed by the lions so there's no way that he was right there and took this photo so he could copy it when he went home okay this is all straight out from his imagination okay and his understanding of anatomy allowed him, him to paint this from imagination okay and only probably you'll only use reference and you know, photo reference okay not actually copying photo but using photo reference Now, here's another guy, Paul Huave. Paul Huave is, his style is very stylized, okay? Um, he has a very stylized um, painting structure, but he still has a very strong knowledge of anatomy. So even though it's, his art is very stylized, you can still tell where the scapula is. You can still tell where the muscle structure is. So. Even though it's a very stylized painting and, and drawings, he still has a great knowledge of anatomy. Okay? So, allows him to paint these animals from imagination. Okay. Now, the reason why I show you that is because we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to draw animals, understanding basic uh, anatomy constructions and basic form. And, basic understanding of 
um, anatomy of animals allows will help us allow us to draw animals from imagination and not copy straight out of photo. Okay, um, straight out copying straight out of photo does not help you learn. Okay, it only helps you see. So, but it doesn't help you learn. So, I want to show you some bad animal art. Um, just to kind of show you and give you a quick demonstration of what happens when you copy straight out of the photo. Okay. So, here's just some, I'm just going to bring out some image here of animal artists that rely on photo. And what happened is that their forms become lost and they become very flat. Okay. So here's a good great example here is this person took this image straight out of photo and copied exactly. I even found you know the photo here. Okay, copied straight out. Okay. And everything's become really flat. You see this dimension here because the light shines down. And reflects and then hits on these highlights. You don't see this here on um, this drawing here. Everything's become really flat. Okay. Here you can tell that he does not understand the basic form anatomy. The neck is lost, the neck is basically broken here. Highly rendered drawing. Now you could tell this straight out, this is straight out copying for photos. Most animal artists out there today that do not understand animal anatomy only focus on copying straight out what they could get and the problem is that they don't know the whole part of the animal that's why they usually you see them actually drawing straight out of the photo and you only see them drawing a face okay, and not the full body and not the feet they always try to avoid the feet because they don't know how to draw the feet Okay. Here's two examples of how image can become really, really flat, okay, not understanding the basic structure of anatomy, allowing basically have this really plushy stuffed animal look. And this is what you really want to try to avoid uh, when you're drawing animals. Okay. Just straight out, really looking really plushy, don't know where it is. Um, landmark is where his um, bone construction is. If you put this and compare this to the Bob Coon painting of the lion lioness, okay, knows how just how strong and understanding the muscle structure here allow him to really show this dynamic pose and comparing to this, where there's lack of bone construction lack of muscle construction. Now, of course, this will look really plushy compared to this. Okay, So, just to want to show you some stuff to tell you um, to make sure that you don't copy from photo and don't copy straight out of photo. And I also want to show you some other images um, of photo illusions that also shows some great example of why we don't copy straight out of photo. Okay. Photo can manipulate okay, because they only have one lens. Humans has two lens, so we can see in three dimensions. So this allows photo to be manipulated. Okay. I want to show you some some other images here that show you how flash and unflash photos can be can look very different so here's an example of no flash and a flash notice how when you flash everything everything becomes flatter okay this is also the reason why you know they say the camera has 10 pounds because camera only has one lens and when you also add flash on it you flatten everything out when you have no flash you get dimension you have form okay, you can see the form because of light okay because the camera only has one lens the only way you can see form is the shadow and the highlights okay so same thing in another example here okay without flash with flash 
everything's more flattened everything's more closer to you okay when there's no flash you know just reflection just bounce light okay you can see the dimension of the form so this is one main reason why we also don't copy straight out of photo okay photo only gives you so much okay? you want to start constructing and building up okay and not just rely on copying straight out of photo here's another example of why photo can be manipulated so easily now here's an example of a 50 millimeter camera and here's a 34 millimeter camera and a 55 millimeter camera now they're all placed in the same direction in the same place same direction but it's because the different lens of the camera allow them to show different depth from the same area okay, 18 millimeter basically makes things look really far away you know 34 millimeter may make things look closer 55 will make things look even more closer so this is also another reason why we don't copy straight out of photo okay we only, we're going to use photo for reference okay but we don't copy straight out of photo okay all right okay so let's begin with some basics so here I have some basic uh, body construction for animals okay now notice here I have the horse the dog elephant and cow okay four very very different type of animals but all have the same type of basic construction okay they have the head the neck the scapula and the humerus the elbow radius on a carpus metacarpus the metacarpal um, joint and your phalanges um, body pelvic bone femur patella tibia and fibula heel metatarsal metatarsal joint and phalanges okay so if you see here you have dog elephant and cow and notice how even though there's outer proportions very different they all had the same parts okay you got an elephant still has an egg still has a head and still has a scapula so has all the parts like the horse okay um, the inner construction basically all animals are pretty much the same okay? um, you may heard this from other um, teachers of yours form follows function so different type of form of animals um, have different type of functions in nature okay so this is where they adapt in nature allow them to have different type of shape but the core of the animals all pretty much the same so here's just another example of the foreleg uh, I just want to show you how a more example of how similar these are so here I have the to the major extreme of different type of animals and limbs. You have the lizards and the birds. Even lizards and birds have the same type of construction, like a horse, cat, elephant, or a cow. Okay. He still have the scapula, humerus, elbow, radius and ulna, carpus, metacarpus, and your phalange. Okay. He has the scapula here, humerus, elbow, radius on the birds will kind of fuse in the front but still there. We have the thumb, okay, metatarsal, and you can have your phalanges. So all of these are still basic foundation of the animal. It's still pretty much the same when it comes to the horse and you know, when it comes to more more extreme to the birds. So I want to show you some back view of the animal same thing you have a horse to the extreme of lizards and birds still have the same type of construction you have the knee you have the femur joint and you have the radius ulna you have the carpus you have the metacarpus you have all the same parts 
Okay, so all these all have the same parts of the animal. Okay, so when we talk about constructing animals, we are all going to talk about the inner bones. Okay, because the inner bones is the most important. The first thing we're going to learn is the bones, and then we're going to go on to the next. So here I have a diagram of what I want you guys to really keep in mind of. Okay, um, We have the skull, jaw, cervical, thorax, and lumbar. Okay, This top main part, the three main sections of the backbone I really want you guys to remember is the cervical, thorax, and lumbar. Okay? Now to the limbs, I want you guys to remember the scapula, the humerus, the radius and ulna, Carpus, metacarpus, and the phalanges. Okay, on the back, one you guys to focus on is the pelvic bone, the femur, the tibia, uh, the tibia and fibula, the heel, okay, the metatarsal, and the metatarsal joint, and the phalanges, and also your patella, your kneecap. Okay. Also, a great example here is to show you that even though a lion diagram here, it's very different to predator compared to a prey, but they still have the same type of construction, same areas. Now, I marked areas here of, of blue, which I really want you guys to really focus on, is the landmarks. The landmarks is where muscle leads to and connects to. And landmarks is very important because there's also joint landmarks, okay, where the joints are moving, and all the landmarks where muscle connects to. And these are very important because this will help us construct the animals later on. Um, so little areas you want to focus on, the tip of the pelvic bone, the back tip of the pelvic bone, the edge of the femur, the actual kneecap, okay, the tip of the tibia and fibula, heel and your toes from the top you have the scapula scapula ridge and then you have elbow wrist and you have your fingers top you have the eyebrows the zygomatic arch and the tip of the jaw same with the horse a little bit different on the horse and compared to the cat is that the top landmark here, we're going to focus on the tip of the thorax instead of the tip of the scapula. Tip of the scapula here. Okay, so we will focus on the tip of the thorax here instead, and then the cat. Okay, back to the slides. I want to show you some basic uh, forms, and this is also going to be uh, somewhat part of your homework. Um, here's some basic shapes I, I want, really want you guys to really focus on: it is the cylinder, cube, uh, sphere, and oval. We're going to utilize these type of shapes and to help us control construct mass of animals. So, as you can see here, I have the lion. Um, uh, actually leopard um, drawing here constructing with basic shapes I have a horse here basically construct with the basic shape okay very important this allows us to draw animals in three dimension um, for using three dimension um, knowledge allow them to draw them onto 2d platform okay so make them in the 3d forms in a 2d platform you we got you guys got to understand these basic shapes and we're going to cover them over and over again um, allowing to really get in your head so I really guys really really want you guys to you know, keep in mind of these basic shapes okay? your landmarks and your basic shapes are going to be the very most important thing um, we're going to cover so far
here's an example of just how important basic shapes are um, and some practice for you guys to really keep in mind of. Here I have a basic construction, okay, just to kind of show you how important using basic shapes are. Um, Sometimes it's always good to a good practice to wrap around your basic shape here so you can understand where your shape is direction is going. So notice I'm wrapping away here and wrapping away, showing indicating that the shape is going away from me. Okay. Shape okay, form is basically you know simple form here. Now lighting your simple form becomes more easier than lighting this okay you gotta understand your basic shape because your basic shape helps you describe the form now when you, when you start lighting them okay when you indicate lighting them light and light and shadow basically indicating is indicating form so if you don't understand your form if you don't understand your basic shapes then lighting and shadow rendering it's BS okay? it does not help you doing light and shadow and all these rendering if you don't understand your forms okay so I really want you guys to keep in mind that here's a example of just taking to a next level from using basic shapes and taking to a next level and actually painting them and using basic ideas of cylinders, tombstone shape here, cylinder here, and the box here allow me to light and darken this drawing just by understanding these basic shapes. Okay, so let's move along here. Okay, rhythm. Now, once we start to get comfortable with constructing mass and constructing form and mass on our animals, you want to start adding rhythm to them, okay? So you don't want to keep it stiff like a basic geometric shape here, okay? You want to start adding rhythm, you want to start adding muscle mass, okay? This is just a guide, okay, which I will want you guys to actually draw this out first then you start adding rhythm on okay never add rhythm in the beginning okay rhythm means linear details okay little linear details that you incorporate so little curves straight curves here okay that is secondary to this that's why I want to show you guys this first because basic forms basic mass comes first okay you want to understand all this first before you jump into adding rhythm on your animals. Okay, so set, given that said, I just want to show you this, but I don't want you want really want you guys to jump into this until you master your basic fundamental forms. Okay, so rhythm, rhythm basically you want to move your audience eyes around. You don't want to make it so stiff that it's boring. So here I have an example of a horse leg that's really stiff and really boring, okay? Now, notice how once I started adding more curves and straights, like the elbow straights, okay, the extender muscle section here, more straighter, exter ex uh, flexor muscle on the back more stiff because it's less of muscle. In front, you have the extender muscles more rounder, so it's more curve. Okay, you have more curve and you have curvature, okay, unevenness, asymmetrical. Okay, so here's another example of why you want to keep a rhythm asymmetrical all the time. Notice how the curves are very symmetrical here and it's very, very boring. Okay, and your eyes basically tr gets trapped on every curve. Okay?